Hi guys, welcome back. In recent years, AMD and its Ryzen processors are growing in popularity, at times offering better performance and value for money than Intel. However, things were not as smooth a decade ago. What we look at today is AMD's FX8320E, released in September 2014 as part of the new E series of processors in the existing FX lineup. This 8-core Vishera-based chip was manufactured on 32 nanometers, and importantly, thanks to more mature process, introduced a lower 95W TDP that's down from 125 of the non-E8320. Out of the box, this 149 USD processor will turbo up to 4 GHz, but having an unlocked multiplier, it's ready for some overclocking. In today's testing, I will be using Gigabyte's GA990XA UD3 motherboard, which is paired with 16GB of DDR3 memory. Cooling is provided by 120mm Corsair H50 all-in-one, and I'm using two 500GB SSDs for OS and games. I've chosen R9 Fury X as the time period, and the RTX 3080 as the overkill GPU. I'll start by everyone's favourite activity, updating the motherboard BIOS. I would not bother, but had some trouble with dialing in my overclocks, so here goes. Gigabyte BIOS is very easy to navigate, and the CPU overclock is applied by simply increasing its unlocked multiplier. Default is set to 16 for 3.2 GHz base clock. I've decided to settle on 4.5 GHz overclock and found the platform to be very stable. I've not encountered a single freeze or crash during my testing. Let's first establish the CPU performance using CPU Z Bench. At stock speeds, the FX pushed rather poor single thread score of just 212 points, which was one of the lowest score ever recorded, falling even below 775's Q9550. When overclocked to 4.5 GHz, the score improved by 25%. At stock, the multi-thread score of 1244 barely beats the overclocked Q9550. At 4.5 GHz, it falls short of the i7960, a 5-year-old part at the time. I realise the 8320E was priced to compete with 4th gen i3s, but it's still impressive to me how little synthetic performance there is. In Cinebench R20, the FX does significantly better. Stock and overclocked, it's matching i7-960's performance. Are you surprised by these results? Let me know in the comments below. I'm looking forward to testing Intel's 3rd gen next. How much of an improvement are we going to see? With the benchmarks over, let's play some games. I've used the R9 Fury X to showcase period correct performance and the 3080 to introduce CPU bottleneck. That being said, part of me thinks we might be CPU bound even with the Fury X, but let's see. 2016 Need for Speed is where we start. With the Vita kicking in and maxed out settings, I saw a nice 82.5 FPS average with the Fury X, which was not even utilized fully, and there was absolutely room for more. The severely underutilized RTX 3080 achieved just 77.5 FPS on average, which really highlighted the bottleneck in this system. Are you guys on this need for speed still, or is it a pass for you? I've only played a little, but the supercharger induction noises are quite addictive. Nico, it's your cousin! You want to shoot some pool? Some classic moments in GTA 4. As per usual, not even all AMD combo does it for this game. Both CPU and GPU were not harnessed properly, but at least, I did not notice any significant hiccups with the Fury X, which pushed nearly 73 FPS on average. The Mighty 3080 at just over 60 FPS proves how much important it is to balance your build. Did you know there are still nearly 100,000 people playing GTA 5 on average? Well, I'm one of them, and I certainly still like testing it. With very high settings, we've reached the ultimate bottleneck. Both the Fury X and 3080 achieved around 66 FPS on average, and also matching 1% lows. Well, within the margin of error. Nice. First run of Fortnite was very choppy, and at times down to single frames. However, this issue stopped after a few minutes into my round. I'm not sure if the game engine simply needed to cash in, Game then ran nicely and using high settings got me just under 60 FPS on average with the Fury X, the 3080 pushed 68. Even though 1% lows are shockingly low, I can't say I noticed them. 
2017's Prey is one of those games that get tense pretty early on. I love the level design and also the mimics. Anything space related does it for me. Using very high settings, Fury X pushed well over 115 FPS on average and often hitting the 144 FPS cap. The 3080 pushed further to nearly 130. In Titanfall 2, I used maxed out settings and so nearly identical results again, thanks to the 144 FPS cap in game. At least, the Fury X finally got pushed to 100% use most of the time, but the 3080 was barely touching 40% usage. Now even though this was my first ever attempt at Halo Infinite and I got owned, I blame the rather low 27 FPS on average I got with the overwhelmed Fury X. The 3080 provided much more fluid gameplay and tables have turned, I got much better at killing bots. I'm really looking forward to testing the Fury X on my test bench. Place your bets now, how much more FPS are we going to see using the 10850K and Fury X using the same low settings? The 2016's Doom was up next. With ultra settings and using Vulcan API, Fury X was pushed to the limit. And I saw 81 FPS on average. The RTX 3080 really shined, adding nearly 100 FPS on top. This or the Doom Eternal? Let me know in the comments down below. and the last game tested was Cyberpunk 2077. Even low settings were quite challenging for the Fury X, which despite being utilized nicely, only achieved 37 FPS on average. The 3080 nearly doubled that to 67, and I also saw, for the first time, CPU utilization at around mid 80s. Well there you have it guys, the AMD FX 8320E, so, what is the takeaway? In my opinion, despite having 8 threads and relatively high core clock frequency, I was not impressed with its overall performance. Period benchmark would suggest it could match Haswell Core i3s, but only when heavily overclocked and at twice the power usage. On the other hand, AMD priced it competitively and allowed all existing AM3 users to upgrade without the need for new motherboard. I think reaching rock bottom was somehow necessary AMD have really come a long way since, powering many of your gaming computers and mine included. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. What do you think of this FX processor? Let me know in the comments down below. See you in the next one.